All right, today we have something a little bit different. Uh, a 17 inch MacBook Pro. Uh, this is one of the models dating to mid 2007, uh, early 2008. It has a bit of a problem. So let's have a look at what the exact problem is. So what essentially happens is uh, you turn it on, optical drive resets, front LED lights up. As you can see there. But there is no caps lock response, which indicates USB is not initializing. So how do we fix this? How do we fix this? Replacing the main board is probably the quickest way to fix it. Um, this video also assumes that the RAM inside the machine is functional. I'll give it a quick flip over. Battery has been misplaced and a lot of the screws also have gone missing. So, holding the RAM door on with tape. Crude but efficient. As you can see the RAM is installed. We'll remove the RAM. And try powering on the machine again. Optical drive resets, no display, no chime. No caps lock response. So this indicates that the problem lies with the main board. Um, it's not posting no post. Um, if it were posting and we remove these RAM chips and the front LED would blink. As we're not getting that, there's something wrong with the main board. So we're going to attempt to repair the main board today. So let's uh, get it pulled apart. So as you can see, there's a lot of little balls. As they heat and cool, heat and cool, they eventually crack, which results in bad connection or no connection, which will presumably give you a similar problem as this. It may not be exactly the same. You may get video distortion. Um, no video as this, but with USB response. So let's go ahead and uh, get this done. So I'll clear all this off the bench and get the heat gun out. So you're probably wondering what tools will I need? Well, I've got a $100 Bosch PHG 630 DCE. Includes a fantastic LCD for temperature control. Three fan speeds and heat. You'll also need uh, something to put the uh, logic board, main board on. Um, I've got a box. I found that uh, Doing it on top of a box seems to work. For me, might not for you, at your own risk. The box may catch fire. Not my problem, your problem. Be careful. So, with your heat gun in hand, set it to 300 degrees. Actually, before I begin, I probably should remove that thermal paste. So let's do that in super speed. You ready? Here we go. And now we apply heat. So 300 degrees. And honestly, I don't know how long it should really go for. So I've got a little thermometer on the back of mine. 300. 
heating up. Hot, hot. I can't remember what temperature uh, solder melts at. And we're just about there. So then you want to focus that heat. I'm using heat setting two. About two inches above the chips. And then you wait. This particular heat gun has a uh, temperature sensing, so it's quite handy. If you get too close, it cuts back, throttles back the temperature. Now, I don't know how long you should really hold it over. I've had good results with maybe three minutes per chip. Your arm will get pretty tired by the end. So let's speed it up. Once you've finished, uh, just make sure you run your heat gun on the low setting, just so it runs down to a coolish temperature and doesn't uh, get damaged due to the uh, extremes of hot and cold. Could say the same things about these, really. Bring them down gently. Nope, not this time. So if you hold your hand over them, you should be able to feel quite a bit of radiant heat. So I didn't bother with uh, this chip over here or did do the RAM for a second. But yeah, once you've got heat coming off these three, you should be good. So um, the board is quite hot. You can feel all the way over here there's heat. Even the um, DVI port's got a bit of heat coming off it. So now that's nice and good, hopefully. We'll just put that aside and begin reassembly. Hot box. While you're in there, you might as well check the fans and the vents for dust. As you can see on this one, there's a bit of dust. But least of our problems really, but given that that's probably five years worth of dust, it's not too bad. Could have been a lot worse. So let's speed it up and get it back together. Okay, so once all the connectors are in, all the screws are in, uh, you can give it a quick uh, power on, see what happens. I've lost the power adapter.
hear that. It's doing more than it was before. No RAM. That's a good sign. We also attach the uh, front LED, no doubt it would blink. So, just keep putting it back together. Turns on automatically. Video. As there's no hard drive in this machine, um, it's probably going to show a flashing question mark folder. It's only to find a hard drive and an operating system to test it a bit further. Then again, maybe it's time for another speed up. Booting to CD has to be the most slowest way of doing anything. Anyway, some uh, very positive signs are is that we now have the GUI enabled uh, and there's no artifacting. The fact that it made it here is a good sign in itself. Of course, I haven't put a hard drive in yet, so I can't show you much more. Things we do want to check though, through system profile and just check for some some signs of problems that may have happened over the time. Um, we want to check the uh, the link width on the uh, graphics chip, make sure it reads as 16 speed on this model. Uh, some it is 8, some less, some 1. It, it depends on the model. These particular models, the mid 2007 and early 2008, need to be 16. As you can see right there, once I bring it around, sixteen. So that's a very good result. Hopefully, you'll have the same. If you do, leave a comment. Always glad to hear from you. Well, I had a look around. Unfortunately, I don't have any spare hard drives. Um, the interesting thing is though, while this may have fixed one problem, it may have created more because as you'll notice I wasn't using any anti-static protection. Uh, you can ground yourself using a wristband if you want. I chose not to in this because the machine was already pretty dead. Um, there's also a chance you'll fail. No guarantees of success. While it does seem to cover multiple mode failures, um, there's no reason that I can see that this wouldn't work on even the 2009, the 2010s, 2011s, if you're getting a symptom such as no video. Of course, if you spilled liquid on the machine, that's gonna cause problems. But if you haven't spilled any liquid on it, and it's just not working, chances are your CPU or GPU has detached itself from the mainboard. So get out your heat gun, Leave us a comment, don't forget to like the video, and I hope you enjoyed. Retrojunkie.net for more. Oh, another place this method would work is uh, Xboxes with uh, Red Ring of Death. Uh, that's where I originally got the idea, actually. So, thank you Xbox and uh, PlayStation Yellow Light of Death. 